tips on opening a bra restaurant, just, you know, be prepared to have it consume your whole life and, yeah. you know, make sure it's a good space. Yeah. Sarma Mangalis, the woman who created an empire with fancy restaurants that served the elite raw vegan food, is also the woman who sabotaged her own legacy in fine dining with hubris and greed. After being caught up in a semi-cult to attempt to make her dog immortal and giving the leader millions of dollars, she basically tanked her own business. Both of her restaurants closed in 2015 amid staff walkouts, and she was arrested and convicted for fraud in 2017. She was sentenced to prison on Rikers Island. And now we get her whole opinion on the Bad Vegan documentary alongside her plans for a supposed eventual comeback. Sarma was born in Latvia but raised in Newton, Massachusetts. Her mother is also a professional chef and instilled a love of cooking in her for at a very young age. After she graduated from the University of Pennsylvania in 1994 with a degree in economics, she decided to move to New York City. She began working at investment firms specializing in private equity. Private equity is also called investment funds when companies are bought out and restructured to maximize profit. After working and investing for a few years, Sarma decided to leave business and enroll at New York's French Culinary Institute. When she graduated, her and her boyfriend at the time opened a restaurant that would close down only two years later. After spending some time consulting others on proper business practices, she opened up her restaurant Pure Food and Wine in 2004 as an upscale raw vegan food restaurant. This restaurant would be a much larger success and it was listed twice in New York Magazine's Top 100 Restaurants and five years in a row in Forbes Magazine's All-Star New York Eateries. Due to the business doing so well for itself, Sarma and her business partners also opened One Lucky Duck, a takeaway eatery attached to Pure Food and Wine. By 2009, Sarma started to believe that Matthew Kenny, her boyfriend and co-owner of the restaurant, had given inadequate attention to the financial side of the business. So, her and another co-owner decided to expel him from the business because he believed that Sarma knew best due to her financial background. The business itself did so well that it garnered an insanely loyal clientele, including celebrities like Anne Hathaway, Owen Wilson, and outspoken lover of the chain, Alec Baldwin, who met his wife Hilaria at the restaurant in 2011. There was also a lot of loyalty from the workers of the restaurant itself, who sometimes referred to Sarma as Sar Mama. And then, the beginning of the end. Sarma met a man named Anthony Strangis. They met on Twitter and began an epic love affair, although Anthony was hiding a criminal past and gambling addiction from her. He began convincing Sarma to take money from her business and spend it on personal purchases. They had siphoned over $2 million and began stiffing employees, duping investors, going on the lam, and spending lavishly on hotels, watches, and casinos. A source close to the situation described the scenario wherein Anthony would use cult-like techniques, including gaslighting, sleep deprivation, and sexual humiliation to control Sarma. Anthony even convinced her that he would make Sarma's beloved dog, Leon, immortal if only she could give him the cash to find the right people to get it done. Anthony had done this before, too, convincing a woman to marry him and she fell pregnant. He moved into her house and then after she became so poor from Anthony taking all of her money that she had missed months of mortgage payments, he took off. He left behind an almost one-year-old son whom he apparently never visits nor has sent any money to support. Eventually, with Sarma, it got so bad that she owed almost half a million dollars in missing wages to her employees. In 2015, they staged a walkout after not being paid for a few months. This was the second time that year that she hadn't paid her staff and they must have finally just had enough. She only addressed the walkout and subsequent closure of both restaurants in a blog post in February 2015. She apologized for the incident, but later decided to delete the post for whatever reason. In an interview with Well and Good, Sarma stated that the delayed wages were due to slim margins caused by debts and expensive ingredients, and that she had also previously missed her own rent payments. During the ordeal, however, she provided employees with a completely different explanation, blaming the situation on changing banks. In April 2015, Pure Food and Wine, One Lucky Duck, and OneLuckyDuck.com reopened. A majority of the staff from the original walkout did not return, obviously, after it reopened. And then, only a few months later, the staff of both restaurants walked out once again for unpaid wages. This was the last time the restaurant would attempt to reopen, 
and it finally was permanently shut down in 2016. Then, both Sarma and Anthony became wanted for fraud and unpaid debts. Their response? Flee the scene. They were holed up for a while in random hotels and motels, subsisting on vegan bowls from Chipotle. Well, apparently not really though, because how they were eventually caught was when Anthony ordered a decidedly not vegan pizza from Domino's using his real name. That monumentally stupid decision is what led the police to the location of the fugitives and they were promptly arrested. Anthony was formally charged with quote, fugitive from justice warrants, grand larceny, scheme to defraud and violation of labor law. Sarma was wanted for grand larceny, criminal tax fraud, scheme to defraud, and violation of labor law. On December 19th, 2016, prosecutors offered Sarma a plea deal in which she would agree to serve one to three years in prison. She took the deal and pleaded guilty to stealing more than $2 million from investors, scheming to defraud, and criminal tax fraud charges. She received a jail sentence of nearly four months, which she spent on Rikers Island. Not surprisingly, Sarma filed for divorce from Anthony only a few months later. So what's she up to now that she's out of prison and a freed woman? Well, she's certainly not happy with the new documentary about her called Bad Vegan, Fame, Fraud, Fugitives. She slammed the documentary, calling it misleading, especially near the end when it seemed to hint that Sarma was still in contact with Anthony, of which she is not. Anthony himself has, quote, gone on to live his life. He's got a job, uses his name, this is behind him and she's behind him. The fact that Strangus had moved on is part of the reason he didn't want to get involved in the production of the documentary. Quote, he pled guilty to it, he opened up to it, and he did it long before Sarma did. His case was resolved probably close to a year before Sarma's was. The former restaurant owner did eventually pay her employees who went unpaid during the time period shown in the documentary. Mel Galis wrote on her website that in exchange for these source materials and images she contributed to the docu-series, she received a fee that went to the attorney representing the employees. So at least there's some justice there for the people who were scammed. On their repayment, Sarma stated, quote, I was relieved once this payment went through, but that was just a small part of what remains outstanding. I wanna be clear that I'll keep working towards addressing it one way or another, eventually. She also wrote that besides the back pay, which she claimed on her income taxes, that she did not profit off of Bad Vegan. Quote, Netflix and slash or the producers can confirm this. Anyone who's been the subject of a reputable documentary or who works in the industry could also confirm the standard practice of not paying subjects. According to her Instagram, Sarma spends a lot of her time reading and hanging out with her dog, Leon, at her New York City home. She also seems to be working on projects where she can continue to tell her story, judging by a post when she was recording a podcast three weeks ago. The raw food enthusiast also said that she was up for opening another restaurant during a New York Post interview in 2019. Quote, if there was some magical opportunity to open the same restaurant in the same place, I would do it in a heartbeat. I think New York would take me back. And what about her dog, Leon? Well, although he is still not immortal, he is alive and well. He just celebrated his 12th birthday this March and he is regularly featured on Sarma's Instagram. You signed on to this. You told me you wanted happily ever after. Anthony Strangis, the mastermind behind the hit documentary Bad Vegan that reportedly siphoned millions of dollars out of Sarma Melgalis and her Manhattan raw vegan food empire. While Sarma takes much of the spotlight in the documentary, Strangus is the central figure to the bizarre events at the heart of Bad Vegan. While he declined to take part in the documentary, Anthony has had an extremely interesting life wherein he's been known for scamming women before. And now, after he's done his time in jail, we catch up and see just exactly what he's up to these days. Anthony is a native to Massachusetts. Although during his trial, there was no information leaked that may have stated his educational background, it is known that his father served as a police officer for 25 years. What else we know about him is that he is no stranger to conning women out of their money. Back in 2003, Anthony met with and got close to a woman named Stacy, of whom he ended up marrying. He did so under the pretense that he was a former Navy SEAL who got injured on duty and so now lives at his home in a state of rehabilitation. When he married her, he moved into her home and began stealing her money to pay for his gambling addiction. He even had a child with her, a son of which he would later abandon to pursue other women. He convinced Stacy that there were people after him and that he needed money in order to get them off of his back. He then stole all of her jewelry, claiming he would pay it off later, and fled to Vegas, leaving her to care for his infant son alone. 
Sadly, even after all of that, Stacy was the only one who wrote a letter to the judge during his trial with Sarma, attempting to plead for his innocence. Then, while on Twitter under the username Mr. Fox, he connected with Sarma for the first time. By the time he met her in 2011, she was already an extremely successful vegan restaurateur who had created an upscale business in Manhattan where celebrities dined on raw vegan food. He would comment on her photos and eventually, I guess he slid into the DMs because they would enter into a relationship shortly after connecting with one another. He told her much of the same things that he had previously told Stacy. To Sarma, he was in the military, and to avoid questioning, he told her he was, quote, involved in some sort of black ops, like the stuff that's under the radar that nobody writes about that's kind of unofficial, and he would never answer anything directly. He made me feel, almost like for my own protection, I shouldn't ask. According to Vanity Fair, Anthony promised Sarma that he would, quote, give her money to become independent of meddling investors, help anyone she wanted, and pay off her debts including a $500,000 mortgage and the $1 million she owed Jeffrey Cordero, the original backer of Pure Food and Wine. That $1 million was a loan she took out from him to buy out her investors and have the business solely in her own name from years prior. So basically, at this point, Anthony had set it up so that Sarma would give him money on the account that he would invest it in unknown business dealings that would benefit her restaurant. Little did she know that the money was being slowly squandered away at casinos to, once again, fund his gambling addiction. Only a year after meeting, Sarma and Anthony would get married. Over the course of several years after their marriage, Anthony spent a large amount of money, some of which she transferred from her business accounts, with the lawsuit reading that he spent almost $1 million at a casino in Connecticut, over $200,000 at another casino, $80,000 on watches, $70,000 at hotels, and over $10,000 on Uber rides alone. On top of all that, apparently he also withdrew hundreds of thousands of dollars in cash. Because he was basically making Sarma go broke, she wasn't able to pay her staff or uphold the quality expected at a restaurant, and so her staff staged a total of three walkouts in protest of not being paid. After the third time, which came after a total change in staff, the restaurant shut down for good. In panic over being sued for labor fraud, Sarma and Anthony ran away and went on the lam in 2016. Eventually, the police found them in Tennessee after Anthony ordered a decidedly not vegan Domino's pizza to their hotel room with his real name, dummy. On top of the claim that he would benefit her business if he gave her money, he also used the insane reasoning of if she passed his tests, he could make both her and her dog Leon immortal. Obviously impossible, but I guess Sarma was so brainwashed by this that she ended up giving him large sums of money purely on this claim. Anthony also promised that they would be transported into, quote, some fantastical, magical future where my dog is going to live forever and this reality didn't really matter because it would all be reset to some sort of utopia. Basically, Anthony successfully indoctrinated Sarma into a cult of one, with himself as a leader. In a phone call that was recorded between the two, when Sarma began to question Anthony, he stated, quote, you know what the deal is here. If I say to do something, do it. It's supposed to be difficult on you. It's supposed to make you doubt. It's supposed to make you question everything. It's faith-based. It's a trial by fire. After they were found in the hotel in Tennessee, Anthony and Sarma began the legal process to atone for their misdeeds. Sarma isn't all victim here, by the way. Cult mentality or not, she took hard-earned wages and gave them to her boyfriend. And as an adult, she should know better. Eventually, Anthony would spend a year in Rikers prison for fraud before being put on probation after his sentencing. Unsurprisingly, Sarma filed for divorce while in prison in 2018. As of now, Anthony is a free man who still goes by his real name. He's continued on with his life, and given just how insane what he convinced Sarma of is, I would not be surprised if his name shows up in the news for conning another woman out of her money. According to an entertainment exclusive interview, Anthony's attorney said, quote, he's gone on to live his life. He's got a job, uses his name, this is behind him, and she is behind him. Apparently, Anthony decided not to have a say in the Netflix documentary because he felt that that chapter of his life had closed. Quote, he pled guilty to it, he owned up to it, and he did it long before Sarma did. His case was resolved, 
probably close to a year before Sarma's was. Anthony is remorseful for the people at the restaurant that lost money, and he took full responsibility for his claim in that. Anthony is still currently on probation, although it will end in May of this year if he continues his good behavior. Despite the fact that at the end of the documentary there was a phone call between the ex-spouses that was planning something more in the future, a recent blog post by Sarma clears up rumors of her supposed contact with Anthony. Sarma writes, quote, The end of Bad Vegan is disturbingly misleading. I am not in touch with Anthony Strangis, and I made these recordings at a much earlier time, deliberately for a specific reason. Though she was cooperative with Netflix in the making of the documentary, she felt unsatisfied by it and that she thought her narrative was incorrectly presented to the audience. Quote, There's a lot Bad Vegan gets right, but it's hard not to get stuck on the things that aren't right or leave an inaccurate impression. Later, I'd like to clear up more. While she doesn't elaborate on what that might mean, I doubt we've heard the last of it all. As for the only character in the story who matters to me, Leon the dog is doing just fine and is extremely adorable. Thank you for asking. <laughs>